Hi, my name's Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Jaguar XF. Then I'll take you for riding it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a three litre TD V6 Luxury. 2010 on a 10 plate. Has done 77,226 miles, but will have done more as uh, I'm out in it at the moment. Fuel economy, urban, 29.7 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 51.4 miles per gallon. Combined is 41.5 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 6.7 seconds. A top speed of 149 miles per hour out of a 235 brake horsepower, six cylinder, 24 valve engine. Road tax, six months is £151.25 and 12 months is £275. You could pay 10 times more than we're asking for this car. Uh, in fact, if I put you in the driver's seat or the passenger seat and uh, I blindfolded you before you got in, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. It's just a really, really nice car to drive. Um, very laid back driving style, nice and quiet. It's like a limousine, it's a beautiful car. Anyway, I'll tell you a bit, bit more about it. The, the, the mesh Jaguar grille, um, I think we've got Xenons there, front parking sensors, the low spoiler, the chrome insets to match the grille, multi-spoke alloy wheels, um, good tyres or a, a recent set of tyres all round, uh, Jaguar badge in there in the probably a pre pretend vent and again harking back to the old days when the Jag bonnets used to all lift up like that with a little handle there showing me age. Uh, brushed aluminium trims around the the windows, piano black insets on the uh, door pillars. Electric boot release. The, the shape of it you'd expect it to be a hatchback but it's not. However, it has got a big deep boot, although possibly a hatchback is more practical, a vehicle with a boot is a lot quieter because you don't get the uh, noise from, from the suspension towers coming through into the vehicle. And of course, with a hatchback, it's essentially inside the vehicle. So nice and quiet. The Jags always go for kind of luxury over practicality, I think. But again, lovely, lovely car to be a passenger in and to drive. Also got the reversing camera there and reversing sensors, twin chrome exhaust tips and the uh, Jaguar Leaper there, which should be on the front. Like again in the old days, the big uh, hood ornament. Bit of clever editing there allowed me to have a Great drink of coffee, put this seat forward and uh, put a mat in the, in the back here, a paper mat. Back's lovely, beige carpet, beige interior, great uh, colour combination, um, the lovely Jaguar wood. Nobody makes interiors like, uh, like Jaguar. Um, it, it's nice contrast. Um, what colour? Coffee. Yeah, we're coffee, we'll go with coffee. So uh, the, the top, the dashboard, the top of the door cars, all in this, this contrast material and double stitched. It's really nice, really nice and comfortable. And uh, you always see, if, if heads of state, if they're not in a, a Range Rover, they're in a ja uh, Jaguar. And uh, I, I noticed in the Bond films, I think M travels around in a Jaguar. And uh, you can understand it. I mean, they're nice and quiet, which is understandable because if she was in the back of a BMW, she'd have to shout so loud over the tire noise to, to get the next person to hear that the, the, the person in the car could hear all the official secrets. So Jaguars, absolutely fantastic. Um, my, my mum and dad had a Jag when I was a kid and uh, I, I'll always remember it. It was being in the back. It was just, it was just uh, heaven. Great, great memories. Rear central armrest with two cup holders here. We've got a power socket and your twin air vents in the in the uh, centre console there, or the back of the centre console. It's it's just lovely. Carpets are light new. Again, 
proper carpet mats on. You've got the Isofix rear child seats, anchor points in the back here, and uh, also three inertia reel seat belts. Airbags in the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar. Nice, nice safe environment. And to be fair, you, you feel safe. It hasn't got uh, rear privacy glass. Again, I've said it in previous videos. I prefer the look of cars that don't have rear privacy glass and, and they don't seem quite as claustrophobic in the back. I'll just take you for a ride in it. Jaguar key there, it's uh, keyless go. Electric steering wheel here, easy access as well, goes, you switch off, it uh, goes up, gives you more knee room to, to get out. Electric seat, um, one of the things, well, I like a lot of things about this, this Jag to be honest, uh, but we've also got heated steering wheel and uh, heated seats, controlled from the, the panel here. Um, these days on Autotrader, uh, we have these price banners and uh, just at the moment in the motor trade, probably nobody will believe this, but cars are going up. Um, they're going up faster than we can sell them. And they're going for way, way above. Um, we, we use two valuation services, CAP and uh, Auto Trader. Now CAP is only for the motor trade and is like the glasses guy that you used to have. And the salesman was looking at it like that while he was valuing your car and it had confidential stamps all over the front. Um, and costs a, a fair amount to subscribe to a year. Auto Trader, you can the general public can get the same valuation as as we get. We use Auto Trader, and the unfortunate thing is that we have to use Auto Trader now to, to price vehicles. If you, for instance, if we price this vehicle at what it's actually worth, or what it should be worth, it would have a high price banner on it and nobody would look at it, they, they think we're trying to rip them off, when in fact we're actually trying to sell them the best car on the market. Um, and it, it's unbelievable because dealers get these price markers, yet private people don't. And I went through yesterday, I went through all the cars that are for sale, private people. And it, in our side of the, the dash, it tells us how much, if we paid that much for a car, how much the expected margin would be and in many cases buying it off a private person it would be minus already so the situation at the moment is it would seem that people who sell write-offs dealers who work from home then no VAT and no income tax and no money back no guarantee the old Del Boy song they're getting away with murder and proper honest dealers like ourselves who sell proper cars, we're, uh, we're having our hands tied. Anyway, um, <laughs> although it's bad for us, it, it's good for you. And as I say, this, this car, if you look at it sensibly for what we're asking and what you get, um, for instance, oh, I always like to see this, back brakes, headlamp bulb, wiper blade, the, the, the guy, He's obviously taken a pride and an interest in his car. And uh, here we go, the service history. 1963 miles on the 17th of 10th, 2011. We serviced at Hatfield's Jaguar. Then 3,338 miles on the 5th of 2nd, 2013. Um, H.A. Fox, Jaguar. 13,147 miles, 22nd and 1st, 2014, H.A. Fox, York, 22,964 miles, 13th and 1st, 2015, H.A. Fox, York, 33,113, H.A. Fox, York, 13th and 1st, 2016. And then we come over to the chap that we've uh, got it off. 43,862 miles. 11th of the 3rd, 2017. Steels Hereford. 50,758 miles. 1st of the 2nd, 2018. Steels Hereford. 
58,693 miles, 5th of the 2nd, 2019, Steels Hereford, 65,915 miles, 29th of 1st, 2020, Steels Hereford, 73,239, 26th of 1st, 2021, Steels Hereford. So again, I, I, I prefer seeing a, a dealer stamped history is nice, but I actually prefer independence because I've worked at both. And I know very well that for just general servicing, the, uh, the person in the workshop really, who has the least experience, is going to get the job of general servicing. So you're actually paying dealer, main dealer prices and you're getting not much more than the apprentice in a lot of cases. And I know I'll probably get a few comments about that, but as I say, I've had 50 years in the motor trade and I've worked at Vauxhall, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Peugeot, um, what else? There's got to be a couple of others in there that I've worked out that I've forgotten. And, and, I've, and I've seen it. I, I know what happens. Um, you go to an independent, it's usually the person who's been trained as a main dealer at some point, got fed up of doing <laughs> reporting to somebody else and perhaps having somebody else tell you what to do who doesn't know as much as you. And... Um, they start up their own business. So you, you get the main man servicing your car and, and usually, or hopefully, when you go there, if it's a guy in a, a brown coat with a pencil behind his ear, you, you know you're gonna get a good job because uh, they, they go through it methodically and thoroughly. They don't fly through it because they've got to do a service in an hour and a half they do the job properly and it takes as long as it takes, that, that's it. So I prefer the independent dealers or the independent uh, carriages servicing cars, although technically it's not as good. But this, this car, that full service history, and you also can tell a lot when you're dealing, people who drive Jaguars are, are nice people. They, they, I don't know why, they're usually family people, happily married, well dressed, look after the car, look after the family, and the, the, the guy that I bought this off, or came in part exchange, was a gentleman, and uh, he had to consult his wife first, he's, he's, <laughs> from memory, I think his wife wanted something else and he set so much money aside for the home improvement that his wife wanted and so much for the, the car and the car he was buying off us was 500 pounds outside his budget and I mean I like that <laughs> I really do because it's the complete opposite of, of me I would just I would just buy it <laughs> that no consideration for anybody else if I wanted it I'd buy it probably why I'm single but anyway and then when they come up lovely people well dressed polite nice people and the reason they're swapping the grandchildren they wanted a, a car with seven seats as well so again people who swap because you know because the car's knackered <laughs> um, and, and people who swap for a reason and that's the owner of this car it drives fantastic as I say you spend 60 grand you wouldn't get a car that drives any better than this it's it's beautiful it's well looked after I, I noticed from the last MOT they had advisories on three tires now he must have been thinking of well I know he was thinking of buying a, a, a another car because he said he'd been looking for a few months to find the right vehicle. And uh, again, the, the two different types of people. I've got advisories on three tyres. I'll stitch some dealer up with it, wanting three tyres, they can do the work. Not this guy, four new tyres. 
Um, just why do the people who drive the smallest cars take up the most room on the road apart from cyclists? That is, but nobody nobody takes up as much room as cyclists. This I when I came home in it the other day um, I get my choice of vehicle to drive that, that comes in obviously anything on the, the forecourt that fancy I, I can I can just go home in and um, but it, it does get to be a pain usually when you sell it, it just after you've put a, you know fuel in I've got all my stuff in here we go certain death corner chap driving way too fast as usual I don't know so um, I've got all my stuff and I do carry a lot of a lot of stuff um, I take all my camera equipment out at night obviously so but I've got coats and and just other rubbish in there and every time I sell a car I changing that over I've got a registration plate which I've had for years and, and I've not had it on a car for probably 15 years now and I, I I got in this and I thought why don't I just keep this <laughs> it drives as good as you could possibly want um, and it's just lovely it's a great spec good looking car okay look at that I'll just I'll just give it a bit of gas there and uh, lovely car again the uh, you can tell a lot about the previous owner by the, the windscreen wipers as well windscreen wipers absolutely perfect a, a, pro, a proper guy you know if you drive a, a Jaguar Simon Templar <laughs> classic example although in the first one it was a P1800S in the second one it was an XJS if you drive a Jaguar you're a goodie if you drive a Range Rover you could be a goodie or a paddy or, or a a, a dictator, whatever. Just you could be whoever it is with a, a great choice in cars. But if you drive a Jaguar, you're uh, you're a good person. And this is just lovely. And it, when I'm editing the videos, I listen to myself saying, "Oh." This car's lovely, this car's great, it's brilliant, and so on. And I imagine people who are watching them, because we, we've got 20,000 subscribers now and had 21 million views. I imagine people saying, sitting there and thinking, yeah, Baz, you, you're bound to say that, you're selling it. But um, we, we are in an enviable position in the motor trade of being able to sell what we like and source our own stock and also our cars are so good if we don't want a car then we'll either tell you or bid accordingly there you go sensible country chap there just warning me that there's a little sheepy in the road good use of hazard warning there Oh yeah, there's a few just on the corner as well. There was uh, there was some on a some on a bend when I came this morning. And they were just round the corner, and this time in the morning, is people drive very very fast around here. And uh, there was a couple of them that I didn't really like the look of, and rather than get out of the car and move them, I uh, I. <laughs> I did a Jeremy Clarkson and sent me drone up to just just move them off the road. So, 
hopefully I get don't get reported for scaring sheep or anything. It was it was well intentioned. So yeah, so <laughs> back back to my story. We we're in a fantastic position of being able to look for cars that we, we like and that we want to sell, hence the Land Rover and Jaguars, that we, the amount that we sell. And we're, we're now quite well known for uh, Jaguar uh, Land Rover and Range Rovers. So this, this, this car, if you've got a flipping Repmobile and uh, you want something for weekend. I did notice actually there's um, there's a detachable tow bar in the boot as well. So if you're a caravaner and you want something with a bit of low end torque to and stylish to pull your vehicle, then this uh, this is ideal and very very affordable now. Forget how many stamps there were in the book, but I'm going to stop and count. Just going to stop here a second. Try not to rip the sump out. Give people some room. So let's see how many uh, stamps. One, two. Mate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten stamps, and this will be advertised with all the auction fodder. The people who nip down the auction or buy a vehicle. <laughs> It's, uh, we, we're very short of stock, so we've been scouring the auto trader ourselves, looking for, for vehicles. And um, honestly, everybody you phone up, how many dealers work from home and pretend they're, they're private people? It's just unbelievable. And the stuff they're selling, um, <laughs> and getting away with it too. Is your car still still for sale? Uh, what, what what car? What car? How many have you got? Um, well, uh, you know, I just do a, a bit of trading from home. All right, okay. I rang up one about one the other day. Um, before I before I actually rang about it, I did my homework, obviously. And I noticed the it was a change of owner three days before. Uh, do you mind me asking why you're uh, selling the vehicle? Yeah, uh, I, I bought I bought it for the wife and she doesn't like it. And I'm thinking, oh, he, he's obviously not a Jaguar driver because if he was, he'd have, he'd have consulted his wife first. I said, no, don't don't like it. So in three days since you bought it, you've managed to. Give it your wife, decide she doesn't like it, and put it up for sale. Yeah. All right, okay. So, you have to be careful. And as a, they're, they're asking, I tell you what, <laughs> nearly, nearly at the end of the drive, I haven't told you about the car yet, really. Um, so, here you go, home button. Audio, climate, phone, navigation, we'll just put the navigation on. Being careful around here for sheep and fast drivers. Just got to agree. There we go. Just on a bend. Stupid electric VW. That's a, that's a good idea, isn't it? It's uh, the electric charging point is behind the VW badge. So the VW badge is open. The little plug is hanging over there registration plate so uh, they won't get any speeding fines. There you go. 
climate control and the aircon is icy cold, uh, again being looked after. You've got the rotary gear selector here. If you just press it down and turn across, you put it into sport. Electric handbrake there. And just, just lovely. Electric windows here, electric door mirrors, the serrated panels. Yeah, we'll let this guy go by, give him some room, and I'll have a, a swig of coffee while we're at it. On the steering wheel, so it's electrically adjustable, has got a bit of a squeak, but the car's 11 years old, got to expect something. Still thinks it's in manual there. On the right hand side, we've got cruise control, Jaguar Land Rover product, very, very simple. <laughs> I, am, I am convinced that when they're designing a new car, the remit is, right lads, imagine you're designing this for the, the most stupid person in the world who can't use any instruments or electrics. Cruise control, bad place to put it on here, but I've got my foot on the brake so it'll go off straight away. You just turn that wheel up, that set the cruise control. Um, your audio controls on the left hand side, it has got Bluetooth hands-free. It hasn't got Bluetooth audio streaming. However, if that's a deal breaker for you, um, we are affiliates for a, a product called uh, Panaview. Or is it Palaview? <laughs> anyway, it's one of, one of those two. And uh, there's a car behind me, but I'll, I'll again, I'll just pull over here. Let him go past, and I'll just show you. So although it's not Bluetooth hands-free, in here you've got a power socket, and you've also got an auxiliary. So that's the link flow. Plug it into your cigarette lighter, plug that end into the auxiliary socket, and once you've paired your phone, you've then got... Connected. That's it, and it connects as quick as that, and then I can play, um, let's, let's just, right, I'll put a handbrake on. Right, handbrake's on, I'm not doing anything. I'll touch my phone, um, music. Oh, that's not music, that's Instagram music. Uh, oh, favorite record. When it's not always raining, there'll be days like this. So, 16 quid. So you've got your Bluetooth, uh, audio streaming too. There's a, another one at 49 quid that um, just has a little kind of remote thing. It's got a uh, microphone in it too and you can fast forward or click to the next track, which you can't with that. But if you do want to do that, all you do is, if you've got an iPhone or whatever, you just say it, hey, S-I-R-I, -I, next track please. And it'll it'll go on to your next track. So everything can be uh, surmounted. We've got a instrument display. The speedo or your speedo is on the left hand side. Rev counter on the right hand side. In the centre is your information display. That's controlled from the end of the indicator here. And you can just flip average fuel, average speed. That's very kind of you, mate. That's how many miles you've done, your range, everything you need, nothing too fancy. Apart, I mean, the uh, the actual dash reminds me of Marineville, 
on Stingray. Anything can happen in the next half hour. <laughs> and uh, let's just see. Just stop here. This sound battle stations. And Marineville disappears under the ground. So there you go, the vents, fancy vents. Little things, please. Little mines. Back into drive. Just a pleasant car. And coming up the motorway, nice and quiet, 70 miles an hour. You could just, you could drive anywhere in this. Oh yeah, phone's pinging away there. No doubt they've just found some new strains of COVID. Right, I'm getting I'm getting pinged and text and that's my normal stop off place but it's flooded. So I'll just as soon as I can stop just check that. Reversing camera, front and rear parking sensors. No creaks or knocks or anything, it's, uh, it's so quiet that uh, Mrs. Pheasant there didn't hear us coming. That's it. I'll uh, finish the test drive there. What a great car. Um, lovely to drive, good looking car, nice colour combination, been well looked after both cosmetically and uh, service and maintenance wise. Just, just a nice car. Thanks for watching.